Hello everyone. In nine minutes, we will be starting the webinar. See you virtually later. King the echo ang audio. Morning, Ate Rosie. Morning, Ian. Good morning, everyone. Maka Burks. Good morning. Bola <laughs> dah Adili na po na po. Wala pa yung tingong. Pabutan na siya. Wala na siya. Nine. Mauna siya yung topic. Ay, wala pa. Sige. Wait na lang po. Thank you, Dai. Marinky King. Mauna daw na eh. Ah, di ari lang po kay Kusog. Ah, hey, ang microphone na ti Mercy. Ha? Mercy. Iyon ang microphone? Oh, no.
Greetings of wonderful and healthy morning, mga kadepted of Lano del Norte. Today is Tuesday, the 28th day of September 2021. And I would like to welcome you. Hello everyone. Okay na. Okay na tama. Mag na kaon ng mga
Greetings of wonderful and healthy morning, mga kadep and of Lanao del Norte. Today is Tuesday, the 28th day of September 2021. And I would like to welcome you to our virtual activity for today. Entitled, Webinar on Adolescent Reproductive Health Education, specifically Human Immunodeficiency Virus, or HIV, and Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or AIDS. I am Nurse Catherine Gay Agpasa Putis from the School Health and Nutrition Section, and I will be serving as the program moderator of this endeavor. Before we start, may I remind everyone a few virtual house rules to consider. First, please have your microphones muted and turned off when not in active use. Second, kindly turn your mobile phones and other devices into silent or discreet mode. And third, please be attentive and participative for the entire virtual activity. Okay ba? All right. May I also remind you to register on the attendance link and fill out your answers on the Katami electronic questionnaire, which will be then provided by your respective school nurses. <coughs> okay. So to formally start the program, may I request everyone to please stand as we pay respect to the to the singing of our country's national anthem to be followed by an opening prayer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Today, we are very much fortunate to have the presence of our very own school's division superintendent, Dr. Edelberto L. Aplanaria, SESO 5, our assistant school's division superintendent, Dr. Rosemary T. Masesser, our chief education supervisor in the school governance and operations division, Dr. Maria Carmela T. Ablin, our officer in charge of the school health and nutrition section, Dr. Melvin C. Inerio, our adolescent reproductive health education program focal person, Nurse Kim Rose Ebol, my fellow program coordinators and nurses, school administrators, ARH school coordinators, and of course, our speaker who is currently serving as the Vice Chairman of the Department of Pathology and Laboratories of the Hospital ng Makati, Dr. Almohaimen Masorong Usman. Teachers and the rest of our stakeholders, especially our SSG members and officers, my earnest respect to all of you. At this point, to deliver to us her welcome remarks for today's virtual activity, may I call on to our virtual floor, our ever dedicated and service committed Assistant Schools Division Superintendent, Dr. Rosemary T. Masesser. Hello, good morning. Happy Monday, uh, Tuesday to all of us. So, um, in behalf of our school's division superintendent, Dr. Idelberto L. Oplenaria, and our two chiefs, Dr. Maria Carmela Tumpong Ablin for the SGOD, and Dr. Maria Eva Sayre Edon for the CID, and the rest of the SGOD personnel, especially the school health and uh, and nutrition personnel, headed by Dr. Melvin. Of course, uh, uh, our nurses, our, our school nurses, our focal persons in the schools uh, related to this program. Uh, again, a happy 
Tuesday to all of us. So I would like to welcome you all to this uh, webinar orientation. And you know, this is very important. I think we have been doing this uh, yearly, and yet uh, it is about uh, proper that we conduct this webinar every now and then to remind our school nurses and our school focal persons about the program. And um, I was able to uh, attend uh, a training on this very important uh, that we will um, advocate for this to our learners and uh, not and teachers as well as our parents because you know when we talk about sexuality and reproductive health uh, it seems as if this is a taboo to us it, it is something that uh, most of our parents and even some teachers would not like to discuss because filipinos we are so as, as up to now although we are already in the modern and uh, uh, modern age and yet we still have that uh, attitude of being conservative and so anything that has something to do with sex sexuality is uh, a no no a taboo so that is why we really need to advocate for reproductive uh, health uh, sexuality to our learners so that they will know what is right and what is proper like we have so many uh, some of us our uh, learners might have some misconceptions regarding uh, if they have uh, I, I will not mention anymore some misconceptions so that is why it's very important that our school nurses and our school um, focal persons uh, should advocate for kind of uh, this concern about reproductive health and sexuality to our learners kay daghan kay misconceptions like di la ko mo mention kay lain man but as far as i know uh, and i think all of you are aware na kwan jud um something to do with sex and sexuality is still uh kanang daghan pa ang atong mga adolescent do, adolescents our learners uh, really need to know about. Although they might know about this kay na na may tay internet, but still it is not enough that they will read it and uh, search for it sa Google or sa YouTube. It's really different when we discuss it. Kay at least when we discuss it, we discuss it nga without malice. We give them the right information because not all things that we see on YouTube, on the Google that we search are uh, right. So basic, they might be misled. Uh, some information are kind of fake news. So that is why uh, the role of the school nurses and the uh, school focal persons is very important. So labaw na karon. I think all of you know my dear nurses and school focal persons, that since our learners are mostly at home and uh, um, some of them don't have much to do, so daghan ang na, I think, no? Uh, daghan ang nga boros, no? Okay, so wala naman sila yung magbuhaton, so magkuha na lang sila, mag, na na lang sila yung magbuhaton nga something nga and will result to pregnancy. So the more that we should advocate for it now, um, reproductive health and sexuality, para makasabot sila. And of course, we should also advocate for, it might be too early, but later on, when they uh, when they will become parents, the appeal man siguro po na din na ang um, responsible parenthood, right? So that is why, and then we will uh, also give them kind of advices that um, at this point in their life they must not get pregnant, they must not do kind of mga kind of itong sex uh, before marriage, kind of premarital sex, because that will result to something that will that will um, that might be kind of you know, result to pregnancy, and later on they might regret for the rest of their life, no? Good if they can recover, but of course, we, every now and then, uh, we commit something, uh, but uh, the important thing is they can, uh, can uh, get up and move on. 
uh, yeah, ako nang gikuan because sometimes ang ang cause ana is kani kaning uh, teenage and uh, pregnancy uh, pregnancy nga kanang too early which will result later on to kanang dili sila maka continue with their study so grabe nang akong gi, gi discuss but anyway this is just a welcome message um so once again welcome and would like to congratulate the school health and nutrition personnel for uh, always coming up with this uh, webinar every year and of course thank you for initiating and our participants to this congratulations in advance and thank you also for attending so that is all for now and please please give your uh, uh, full attention and be active in this webinar thank you and god bless us all thank you so much asds Masessor, for such a warm convivial message you are you are right jud mom as uh, medical as medical or health professionals as educators in the field we need to be very careful we need to choose carefully our words so that it would be kanang source of proper education na dili na to corrupt ang mind sa ato ang young learners okay so now to give to us the rationale for this morning's virtual activity May I welcome to our virtual floor our ever dynamic and hard working chief education supervisor of the school governance and operations division, Dr. Maria Carmela T. Ablin, to be represented by our senior education program specialist for monitoring and evaluation. Please help me welcome Ma'am Ivy Tobumbanwa Humawan. Okay, to our school's division superintendent, Dr. Edelberto L. of Linaria, CISO 5, our assistant school's division superintendent, Dr. Rosemary T. Masisar, our SGOD chief, Dr. Maria Carmela T. Ablin, our CID chief, Dr. Maria Eva S. Edon, our Division Administrative Officer, Sir Armando B. Paso, to the Division Health Section Personnel, headed by Dr. Celia Soberi for Region 1, and Dr. Melvin C. Enerio for Region 2. And of course, to all participants, good morning. In behalf of our SGOD Chief, Dr. Maria Carmela T. Ablin, this morning, I would like to give a statement of purpose to this webinar titled Adolescent Reproductive Health Education Program, H and HIV. More than a quarter of the world's population is between the ages of 10 and 24, with 86% living in less developed countries. These young people are tomorrow's parents the reproductive health decisions they make today will affect the health and well-being of their communities and of their countries for decades to come. The current situation of increasing early pregnancies, violence, and increasing incident of HIV among young Filipinos has brought more attention to the need to equip them with the correct information and appropriate life skills that would enable them to make responsible decision-making and respectful behavior that will protect their health, well-being, and dignity. DeepEd is committed to provide and protect the rights of Filipino learners to good education and improve health and to help Filipino learners complete basic education without the burden of health concerns. It also recognizes the roles and responsibilities of school system to give learners the right of, to good health by leading the implementation of a comprehensive sexually education. This webinar intends to achieve the following. First, to sustain the health programs 
established by the Department of Education, emphasizing the Adolescent Reproductive Health Education Program, implementation among public secondary schools of the Edlano del Norte amidst COVID-19 situation. Second, to increase the awareness and resilience primarily among the secondary school learners and among the public secondary school administrators and teachers, school governance and operations division personnel through a reproductive health section. To end up, according to Elizabeth Taylor, it is bad enough that people are dying of age, but no one should die of ignorance. Once again, good morning and God bless to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, that was our Senior Education Program Specialist for Monitoring and Evaluation, Ma'am Ivy Humawan. That was so much reinforcing, Ma'am Ivy. At this moment, to give more warmth to our day and to increase everyone's happy hormones, let us now give the virtual floor to the School Health Section's Zumba Queen. It's a manasha. Our nurse, Rosie Alcesto, from Maigo National High School.
All right, that was Nurse Rosie from the School Health and Nutrition section. Okay. Um, practically, the Adolescent Reproductive Health being one of the flagship program of the Oplan Kalusugan sa DepEd is indeed practically an essential aspect of our learners' holistic learning and development. For trivial purposes, may I ask from our virtual attendees, who among you here can still remember one of our country's pride? Miss Universe Pia words back winning question and answer in the Miss Universe 2015. Anyone? Anyone from Region 1? Can say maka remember at tong winning question and answer sa Miss Universe 2015? Nipia words back. From Region 2, na? Okay, so let me just share. The winning question was, why should you be the next Miss Universe? That was the question. Yan nakadaog ang ato ang pride na si Pia words back. And ang yang answer was, if I were to be Miss Universe, I will use my voice to influence the youth. And I would raise awareness to certain causes like HIV awareness that is timely and relevant to my country, which is the Philippines. I want to show the world, the universe rather, that I am confidently beautiful with a heart. So if you may remember, during September 2015, there were 692 new HIV cases. That was 22% um, higher compared to the same period sa previous year. So anyway, moving on to our virtual lecture proper at this point. May I call on my fellow nurse to give an introduction, a more detailed introduction of our invited speaker for today, Nurse Patre Raifado Mato. Good morning, Nurse Rai. Good morning, good morning, Mom Ching. Okay, good morning to everyone, to all the participants, especially to our SDS, Sir Edalberto, our ESDS, Ma'am Masesar, and our dear SGOD Chief, Ma'am Maricarte Ablin. Our guest speaker for today's webinar is a licensed medical doctor and a diplomate in clinical and anatomic pathology, Philippine Society of Pathologists Incorporation. He finished his residency training in anatomic and clinical pathology in OSMAC or Hospital ng Makati. He is the present vice chairman, training officer, and chief resident in the department of training of in the department of training officer and chief resident in the department of pathology and laboratories in OSMAC. Section chief of section histology pathology department in Mother Teresa of Calcutta Medical Center. Section Chief of Section of Histology, Pathology, Department College of Medicine in Chinese General Hospital Colleges. He is also the leader of assessment, monitoring, and evaluation and research team and member of the board of the trustees. And aside from being a doctor, he is also a host of the radio clinic in BPO Radio graduated as cum laude in Bachelor of Science major in Zoology, awarded as best, best PIDIA clerk in, in his internship, presently affiliated in Philippine Society of Pathologists Incorporated, Philippine Medical Society, Islamic Medical Association of the Philippines, Teach Peace Build Peace Movement Incorporation, and Nyao Mora Professional Network and City Government of Makati. A very humble and down to earth person. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Dr. Mohaimin M. Otsma. A related immune deficiency disorder. So in 1983, in Paris, Luc Montagnier discovered the AIDS of teachers and students. 
Good morning, teachers and students. We will be talking about reproductive health and we What is then the Good morning, teachers and students. We will be talking about reproductive health and we will focus on the human immunodeficiency virus or the HIV and the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS. What is then the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome or AIDS? This would mean that there is a deficiency of the immune system acquired during the lifetime of an individual indicating that it is not a congenital disease. That means that it is not present at birth. And when you say syndrome, this means it's a group of symptoms. What is the history of AIDS? AIDS was discovered in homosexuals in USA or Haiti in 1981. Earlier, it was named GRID or the Gay-Related Immune Deficiency Disorder. So in 1983, in Paris, Luc Montagnier discovered the AIDS virus or the HIV independently and named it the Human T lymphocytotrophic virus number 3, or the HTLV-3. In India, AIDS virus was first found in a group of sex workers in Chennai in 1986, and it was discovered by Selapan Nimala under the guidance of Dr. Suniti Solomon. And in 1986, the International Committee on Taxonomy of Virus named it the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Let's talk about the causative organism of AIDS. So AIDS is caused by a virus called the HIV or the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. HIV belongs to the family Retroviridae. So these are actually viruses that are capable of reverse transcription. Reverse transcription is the ability of the virus to convert RNA into DNA. So it belongs to the genus lentivirus or a small virus causing a slow viral disease. As you can uh, remember uh, that AIDS actually developed several years when you were infected by HIV. So the uh, genus lentivirus would be part of the retroviridae family. Let's now examine the virus itself. So HIV is made up of the outer envelope. So the outer envelope is actually composed of a lipid bilayer, same like the cells of the humans or even the animals. And in this lipid bilayer, we can see the glycoproteins. So look at the figure. You can see that the glycoproteins are present, and it is called the GP41 and the GP120. So the GP120 is the outer glycoprotein, while the GP41 is the inner glycoprotein. So aside from the outer envelope, we have the inner core. And then there is genetic material inside the inner core. And aside from the genetic materials, we can also see the enzymes together with the gen genetic material in the inner core. Let's now examine further the outer envelope of the HIV. So as I have said, HIV has an outer envelope made up of lipids, so it's a lipid bilayer same like the plasma membrane of the animal cells. It also have many or it also has many knobs shaped glycoproteins molecules placed at irregular intervals. And these glycoprotein molecules are of two types. So as I have said, 
the GP120 or the surface glycoprotein and the outer glycoprotein and GP41, which is the transmembrane glycoprotein. When we say that it is transmembrane, it actually uh, involves the whole thickness of the plasma membrane. That's why it is called transmembrane. As we go inside the virus, we have the inner core, which is the part of the virus that has the genetic material. So within the envelope, there is a protein core made of two coats. So an outer P17 called the matrix protein and an inner P24 called the capsid protein. So P24 is antigenic, capable of inducing immune response. So that is the same with the spike protein of COVID. So spike protein is also antigenic. So hence it is called the P24 antigen. So the genetic material which is inside the inner core is within the protein core, of course, that's the inner core, there are two strands of RNA. So within the protein core, aside from the two strands of RNA, there are also the three enzymes. So the first enzyme is a very important enzyme called the reverse transcriptase. So this is the main enzyme of HIV. So the function of reverse transcriptase Cryptase, as I have said, is to convert the RNA of HIV into DNA within the human cell. So the conversion of RNA to DNA is called reverse transcription. Since HIV contains reverse transcript transcriptase, then HIV is called a retrovirus. So aside from the reverse transcriptase, we have the integrase, which helps in the integration of the viral genome into the host DNA. And aside from the integrase also, we also have the protease, which helps in the breakdown of complex proteins formed within the host cells. There are two types of HIV. We have the HIV-1 and the HIV-2. So let us examine the HIV-1. So it is the most common uh, type of HIV. As compared to HIV-2, it is highly virulent and easy, easily transmissible, like the Delta variant of COVID. It is more common and it is seen in India, Asia, America, and Europe. So it is also the uh, most common type that is seen in India and the Philippines. So it is further categorized into four groups, M, N, O, and P. And about 90% of AIDS cases in the world are caused by HIV-1 group M. So what about HIV-2? It is less virulent as compared to HIV-1. It is seen mostly in Africa and it is further categorized into eight groups such as A to H. So how then uh, the human beings get HIV. So it is said that uh, there is a African green monkey containing uh, or acquiring a simian immunodeficiency virus, which is very similar to HIV. And it is believed that this monkey bit or scratched some human beings. Thus, the virus had an entry into the bloodstream of the humans. So that is said. Uh, the reason why uh, HIV is transmitted from animals to humans. So how did the human beings again get HIV? Some believe that the 1950s, in the 1950s, the, the kidney of the African monkey was used to prepare a polio vaccine. This, this vaccine was given to 325,000 African children, and maybe this vaccine caused the spread of SIV to humans. So SIV further mutated to form HIV. So HIV is present in large quantity in the blood, in the lymph, in the semen, the pre-seminal fluid, the vaginal fluid, and the cerebrospinal fluid. And it is also present in smaller quantity in tears, saliva, breast milk, and urine. 
So what are then the modes of transmission of HIV? Of course, the most common is through intimate sexual contact. It can also be transmitted from infected blood or blood products. It, also be, it can also be transmitted through or during procedures. And of course, uh, even though that the, uh, the male in a, a sexual uh, intercourse did not ejaculate, it is also present in the press, in the pre-seminal fluid. And another uh, mode of transmission is uh, from infected mother to child. So that's transplacental transmission or what we call a vertical transmission. So by intimate uh, sexual contact, we mean that it could be homosexual contact or heterosexual contact or with multiple sexual partners. So homosexual contact is the sexual contact between individuals of the same sex. And heterosexual contact is the sexual contact between individuals of the opposite sex. So as I have said, uh, the maximum cases of AIDS are spread by sexual contact. It could also be spread through oral or anal sex. So oral or anal sex is not, are not completely safe. So it can also be uh, uh, transmitted through infected instruments, needles, syringes, during surgery, acupuncture, tattooing, ear piercing, intravenous drug abuse. So sharing also of infected razors and toothbrushes are also known modes of transmission of HIV. So during procedures, HIV may also spread during certain procedures like organ transplantation. It could also be dialysis, procedure done during kidney failure in which waste products are removed from the circulating body, or of course in artificial insemination using an infected semen. So this is now the so-called transplacental transmission or the uh, vertical transmission, which is the transmission of HIV from mother to child. So HIV may also spread from mother to child through placenta during labor or delivery. Spread of infection from mother to child is called a vertical or a transplacental transmission. A nursing mother can transmit HIV to her baby from her breast milk. But if you uh, uh, apply or if you uh, give a treatment of antiretrovirus, this can be prevented. So mothers with HIV can transmit virus to their infants during pregnancy, childbirth, and breastfeeding. But the most common uh, mode of uh, transmission from mother to child is childbirth. For the question, can mosquitoes spread HIV? The answer is no. Mosquitoes cannot spread HIV because HIV is destroyed in the alimentary canal of the mosquitoes. After biting one person, mosquitoes never bite another person immediately. This relax and digest their meal. While biting a person, mosquitoes release their saliva and not the previously sucked blood. So aside from the mosquito bites, you cannot get HIV, I repeat, you cannot get HIV from kissing, hugging, sharing food, insect bites, toilet seats, bathing, sneezes and coughs, and sweat. So that's uh, in comparison with COVID. You can get uh, COVID uh, through sneezing and coughing. So what are then the cells that are affected by HIV? HIV infects only the cells that have CD4 receptors. So the CD4 receptors are present on helper T lymphocytes in blood, alveolar macrophages in the lungs, in the microglia, microglia in the neuroglia in the central nervous system. So the virus can also infect other lymphoid cells such as the B cells, 
the lymphoid cells of the brain and the testes. So what is then the mechanism of action of HIV? So after getting into the body of the person, the virus enters into the macrophages. So it, it depends on the type of the cells that it has uh, uh, invaded. It could be a CD4 T lymphocyte or the macrophage. So when the RNA genome of the virus replicates to form viral DNA, of course, with the help of the reverse transcriptase enzymes, this viral DNA gets incorporated into the host cell's DNA and directs the infected cells to produce more virus particles. So the immature virus is released into the bloodstream. So as I have said a while ago, the proteases help in the budding, of course, uh, when the immature virus is released into the bloodstream. So the macrophages continue to produce the virus and in this way acts like, a, like an uh, HIV factory. So simultaneously, HIV enters into the helper T lymphocytes and replicates and produces progeny viruses. So the progeny viruses or the variants released in the blood attack at other helper T lymphocytes leading to a progressive decrease in the number of helper helper T lymphocytes. Of course, when the virus would attack the helper T lymphocytes, it would kill the lymphocyte. There are several symptoms of HIV, and among the symptoms are the bouts of fever, diarrhea, and a very common symptom is weight loss. And you can see in the picture, there is uh, the HIV rash. So due to the decrease in the number of helper T lymphocytes, the person starts suffering from infections that could have been otherwise overcome, such as those due to bacteria, especially the mycobacterium. Uh, so part of the mycobacterium is the tuberculosis or the mycobacterium tubercle. So it is the most common opportunistic infection of uh, patients with HIV or AIDS. So aside from the mycobacterium, uh, there can also be uh, viruses, fungi, the most common for fungi are the can candida, and even parasites like toxoplasma. So the patient becomes so immune deficient that he or she is unable to protect himself or herself against this infection. So if you have a normal immune, uh, immune system, you cannot have these symptoms or you cannot have these uh, infections. What is then the incubation period of AIDS? So it is the period between the infection or the entry of a causative agent and the appearance of the first symptom of disease. So the incubation period of AIDS is about five to 10 years. So that's a very, very long gap. It could be uh, five years to 10 years. Okay, during this period, the patient is HIV positive, but doesn't suffer from AIDS. AIDS is the last stage of disease. There are actually three stages, and AIDS is the last stage of disease. So the initial infection stage, it starts two to three weeks of HIV infection. Only three to five percent of those newly infected will have symptoms that include fever, chills, aches, swollen lymph nodes, and an itchy rash. So these symptoms disappear and there are no other symptoms for many months. And there is this called the asymptomatic, asymptomatic carrier stage. So that is the same with COVID. There is also asymptomatic uh, stage. So it continues for five to nine years. And during this phase, the patient is HIV positive but has not developed AIDS. As I've said, AIDS is the late stage. In this phase, the individual is infected with HIV but does not have, sh does not show any symptom. Hence, it is called the asymptomatic phase. So the asymptomatic carrier stage, although the individual exhibits no symptoms during this stage, he or she is very or highly infectious. In this phase, it is very difficult to say whether the person has AIDS or not. 
So they, uh, this is also called the latent phase or the asymptomatic stage. Now comes with the early symptomatic HIV infection, which is, which is called the AIDS-related uh, complex. So we, we can classify the uh, signs into the major signs and the minor signs. So the, the signs are the things that uh, the doctor would like to uh, look at or would like to uh, uh, try to rule out uh, to diagnose in order to diagnose AIDS. So uh, we have, number one is weight loss. There should be a weight loss more than 10% of the body weight. Due to the excessive uh, loss of body weight, this disease is called the slim disease or the wasting syndrome. Another major sign uh, of uh, AIDS or the early symptomatic HIV infection is the persistent diarrhea for more than one month. And another uh, uh, sy uh, symptom is the persi persistent uh, uh, another sign is the persistent fever for more than one month. Aside from the major signs, we also have the minor signs for the early symptomatic HIV infection and AIDS-related complex. So we have uh, lymphadenopathy or the swelling or swollen lymph nodes. So the patient has enlarged lymph nodes at least one centimeter. So when you say there's enlarged lymph node, it should be at least one centimeter in diameter all over the body, especially in the neck armpits, and the groin area that would persist for three months or more. There should be persistent cough for more than one month. So excessive uh, coughing is due to the lung infections like tuberculosis, uh, bacteria, uh, and pneumocystis carinii pneumonia. So these are uh, uh, opportunistic infections that are uh, usually seen when the patient has uh, already progressed into AIDS. So other minor signs are, are the oropharyngeal infection, like candidiasis. Of course, there is also a fungal infection that is seen in AIDS, which is the infection of mouth and throat caused by the fungus called the candida albicans. It causes a curdy white coating on the tongue. So there is also skin infection like your herpes zoster or shingles and night sweats, excessive sweating at night. So AIDS can also progress into a full-blown AIDS stage. So this is defined as the helper T cell or the CD4 count reduces below 200 in the blood. So in this uh, full-blown AIDS stage, we have the severe opportunistic infections. So, so these infection, infections are called opportunistic because the body can usually prevent them with normal immunity. But due to an immunocompromised state in AIDS, they can easily occur. So these infections include infections like mycobacterium or the tuberculosis, viruses, fungi, and even parasites like toxoplasma. So the following cancers or malignancies develop also, like the Kaposi sarcoma. It is the cancer of the inner lining of the blood vessels below the skin. And lymphoma, it is the cancer of the lymph node. So when you have the uh, Kaposi sarcoma or the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, these are actually uh, signs or uh, AIDS defining. It means that if you have this, then you, all, you already have a full-blown AIDS stage. So aside from the malignancies that I have mentioned, there is also dementia or the AIDS dementia, which is the loss of memory. So HIV kills the brain cells. It's one of the most favorite uh, cells that AIDS would infect, resulting in memory loss, inability to think clearly, and loss of judgment and or depression. And finally, death occurs. So this is just a... a, a uh, uh, diagram of the clinical features of AIDS. AIDS, of course, the HIV enters the human body, and uh, as the HIV uh, replicates, it eventually kills the helper T cells or the CD4 cells, and then the helper T cells count would decrease, and then the function cells of the cell-mediated immunity decreases. Of course, the helper T cells uh, are part of the cell-mediated cell-mediated immunity, and then 
it developed into an acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome can have opportunistic infections like uh, tuberculosis or pneumonia or malignancy develop and eventually death. So that's a summary of the clinical features of AIDS. But few patients are called non-progressors, as in them, AIDS develop very slowly or never at all. So you, you can be very lucky if you are uh, part of this few patients. This is due to the genetic difference that prevents the virus from damaging their immune system. Actually, in Africa, there are people who are uh, resistant to AIDS. They cannot be infected by AIDS. How do, do, how do you diagnose AIDS? So the first one is a screening test. Oh, a screening test is the, actually in the laboratory, we can have uh, two tests. And the first one is to screen you can screen uh, if you have AIDS. So the screening test that is used in the diagnosis of AIDS is called the ELISA or the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay. So this test is used to detect antibodies produced by the human body against HIV. So the principal enzyme used in ELISA is the alkaline phosphatase. So after the entry of HIV in the body, a period of three to six months is required by the human body to produce the antibodies. During this period, the ELISA test is possibly negative. So the period when the person is infected by HIV but ELISA is negative is called the window period. So this is very dangerous because there is a part or there, there is a period in which the uh, ELISA becomes negative. So you, you must be careful uh, if you, uh, you want to uh, test a patient, you must be careful that, uh, and should know about the window period. So if ELISA is negative, either the patient does not have the disease or may be in the window period. So if ELISA is positive, the person may or may not have the HIV. Of course, ELISA is also a screening test. It needs to be confirmed. So ELISA test may show a positive result in some other conditions like leprosy, TB, malaria, cancer, HEPA B, rheumatoid, arthritis, hemophilia, pregnancy, kidney failure. So these are the tests uh, uh, the, the conditions that can have also positive ELISA test. So you must also be careful. So that's why it's very important for uh, uh, ELISA test that is positive to be confirmed. Now, in the confirmation of the AIDS, we use the Western blood test. It is a confirmatory test for ELISA positive cases. So when you go to the, uh, the laboratory and you tested positive with ELISA, your specimen, uh, it, it will not, uh, uh, it should not be released. It should not be released uh, immediately to you because it could also be a false positive. Remember that there are other conditions that would cause positivity in the ELISA. So it needs to be sent uh, to another laboratory which would confirm that indeed you are positive with HIV. And one of the tests that is uh, used is the Western blood test. So the Western blood is more specific and more reliable, real, reliable for HIV, but it's very expensive. It also detects the antibodies against HIV. This test also has a window period of three to six months, so just like the ELISA. So another uh, very good uh, test that is used for the diagnosis of HIV is the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR. So this is the same PCR that is used uh, for the diagnosis of COVID. So it, it is used to detect viral genomes. So the PCR doesn't have a window period. It is the fastest test for HIV. So let's go now to the last uh, section of my uh, re report. Uh, it is the treatment of AIDS, so uh, this is uh, a little bit uh, optimistic. AIDS is a fatal viral disease without cure. Uh, we should uh, be clear about that. But drugs can only give temporarily a uh, temporary relief and prolong life. So these drugs do not destroy the HIV, but only stop or slow down its multiplication and growth in human body by inhibiting the important enzymes which are necessary for viral replication. 
So these drugs are called virostatic drugs. So uh, viricidal, it means that it can kill uh, the, the virus, but these are actually very virostatic, so they can only uh, suppress diba, the replication of this uh, HIV. So the reverse transcriptase inhibitors or the reverse transcriptase inhibitors uh, bind to the enzyme reverse transcriptase and prevent connection of RNA to DNA. So they are the AZT or the azido, azidothymidine or azidovudine. It is most popular drug against HIV. And we also have the nevirapine or uh, nevirapine alone or in combination with cido, cidovudine is normally advised by the doctors to pregnant to pregnant women to ensure that their uh, babies do not get infected. And last but not the least are the protease inhibitors. So the protease inhibitors bind to enzyme protease and inhibit its action. So the example brands are Foscarnet and Indinavir. So this is the last slide of my presentation. I hope you enjoyed uh, my presentation and I hope that you have learned something from the presentation. So thank you very much and always stay safe. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Almohaimen Masorong Usman. That was a very comprehensive virtual lecture. So that was that might be a pre-recorded uh, lecture, but we would like to acknowledge the uh, virtual presence, the live virtual presence of our speaker for today. That would surely serve as a reminder, Doc, to everyone to keep ourselves HIV free and practice healthier measures to protect our body and our health. So, um, before we proceed to the Q&A portion, shall we take some photo ops for documentation, Mom Kim? Everybody, please open your cameras. Go take one, Kim. Show your smiles. Ready? All right, are we done, Nurse Kim? Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And now, let us proceed or let us give some chance for questions for our resource speaker for today. Mom Kim, please take over. Hello, Doc. Good morning, Luxman. Good morning, Mom Kim and Mom Kat. It's really uh, good to see you virtually. <laughs> Okay. And I see a fresh participants to raise their questions, clarifications for the discussion of Dr. Usman. Anyone? I think they can also I know, uh, type their questions in the chat box. Do we have a chat box? <laughs> Thorough on discussion in dog. Um, if you're shy to I know, to speak like on, on camera, you can also uh, uh, place your question in the chat box. They can also type. We have a chat box. Yes, yes Doc. Doc, we do have a chat box. So let me check. Nice question from uh, YouTube. Yes. Can HIV live outside the body? Actually, I don't see any evidences that uh, HIV can actually live in inanimate objects. So there's there should be a a, uh, a living organism, and it should be the correct or the 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 right uh, uh, part of the organism. Like uh, as I have discussed in the in the presentation. 
uh, the vaginal uh, fluid or the seminal fluid. So uh, it should always be in that spectrum. So there were no evidences of uh, uh, capability of the HIV uh, to live in inanimate objects. So that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, different with the COVID in which there are actually evidences that it can live in inanimate objects. Doc, another question. How long does it take for HIV symptoms to appear? Okay, so usually there's an incubation period. So uh, as we have uh, in the presentation also, we have also discussed this. The incubation period is uh, uh, sometimes it would take years, like uh, about 10 years. They would say that it could be three to 10 years. So, uh, ayon. Uh, but uh, the clinical phase, it has uh, three phases. Uh, the, the first one is the infectious state. Uh, stage. Uh, this is the same with COVID also. And then afterwards, there is an asymptomatic phase and then there is AIDS. So the first one, usually you get the symptoms uh, uh, around uh, three, three to seven weeks after the exposure. So that's the classic uh, development of the symptoms. So, but uh, that is for the majority of the patient because sometimes the incubation period would take a long time. So, uh, yun nga, uh, it could take years. We have a question from the chat box. Paano ba kumakalat ang HIV sa MSM? Can I call on Ma'am Patri Dumato to, to clarify what is MSM? I think men, MSM means ano, parang men who have men. sex with men. Ah. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so that's, ano kasi, that's, uh, that's a new term. They coined a new term like uh, MSM uh, to uh, parang uh, they don't want to stigmatize or uh, what they call this, to try to uh, discriminate the uh, members of the LGBT. So uh, ayan, MSM is a more general term. Okay, so we can explain this. Uh, uh, of course, the, uh, the, the mode of transmission when it comes to MSM is uh, uh, basically the anal, anal intercourse. So we can, uh, we can differentiate uh, vaginal intercourse and the anal intercourse by uh, trying to look at the epithelium. So uh, in your uh, vag vagina or in your uh, anus, you have a, an epithelium and that's the covering the covering of your uh, anus so there's a difference there's a difference with that because if you are if you are uh, having a vaginal sexual intercourse the covering of the vagina is a stratified squamous epithelium when you say a stratified squamous epithelium it has so many layers as compared to uh, anal anal intercourse in which you only have one layer a simple columnar epithelium that's why uh, Vaginal intercourse, uh, I'm sorry to say that, uh, is more, ano, is more uh, resistant as compared to anal intercourse, intercourse when it comes to mode of transmission of HIV. So, ayun, I hope I answered your question. We have a follow-up question. Yes, ma'am. I can see you, ma'am. So there's a uh, appreciation chat from Ma'am Jeanette Abugan Ibarola. Thank you, Doc. So far, no question because it is very well discussed and very comprehensive. I think one question that uh, most people would ask is about the uh, vaccine. Why is uh, uh, a vaccine not developed for HIV? And the answer to that is uh, it is because of the... Uh, the characteristic of the uh, virus itself. Uh, of course, uh, we discussed about the parts of the virus, which uh, the uh, outer layer, the volume outer layer, which is a lipid bilayer, it has several genomes. It means that uh, one HIV virus could have a different uh, genome in the outer coat as compared to the 
other HIV. So it is very difficult to uh, develop an, a vaccine that is targeted to all HIV. You can target only one HIV, but not but not all. So uh, that is where the uh, difficulty in uh, trying to develop a vaccine uh, lies within the uh, treatment of HIV and uh, treatment and prevention of HIV. Thank you, Doc. So another question from the group. How long can an HIV positive patient wait before starting treatment? Actually, you can start right away. You can start right away when you have, uh, uh, if you have, if you have diagnosed with a confirmed HIV. Uh, remember that the uh, uh, diagnosis would compose of a first is um, a screening test, and then second one is the confirmatory test. So when you try to uh, test yourself, or you you're allow you would allow to. Uh, 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 to test or you uh, give consent that you will be tested in the future. I, I mean, uh, uh, like, for example, now you want to be tested, you go to a laboratory, they, they would just test you with a screening test, uh, which is the ELISA. And then uh, after, uh, after the ELISA, uh, if the ELISA would uh, turn out positive, then they have to talk to you. So you know, yung uh, sinasabi nila na, uh, counseling. There is HIV counseling, and part of the HIV counseling is that they would uh, tell you that the test is not yet confirmed. It has to be sent to another lab for a confer confirmatory test, which is, which is the Western blot. And we can also piece, we can also do a PCR test for that. So when it is confirmed, then you have to be uh, referred to an infectious doctor. Because the the remember that the treatment of HIV is more of, uh, uh, as I have uh, discussed, it's not a uh, viricidal. It's not uh, uh, to kill the virus. It's not, uh, it's not going to kill the virus. It's only weakens the virus. So uh, when you start the, the, your treatment late, then it would be uh, late now. Uh, it would be too late for you uh, uh, to lower your uh, viral load. So it's very important that you uh, subject yourself early in the treatment. Okay, that's all for the uh, Q&A. All right. Thank you so much, Doc. Thank you very okay. much. Can I add something, Doc Usman? <laughs> Ayun, mamakat. Uh, na lang ko because before, I guess, mga 2018, so DOH uh, prevention tips for HIV prevention. Naabay na dugang ani, Doc, katong A, B, C, D, E. Diba A is for Pwede abstinence. Mo B is for be mutually Pwede faithful pa. with your partner. C is for consistent and correct usage of condoms, if applicable. And D, don't use drugs. And E is for early detection and education. Anything, Doc, na basic na I update na we need to know or alkoan. Mag hapon ni ang pahinom dum karon. Hello, Ma'am Ka. Thank you very much for uh, uh, mentioning that. No, so so uh, actually, I have to recognize also that we also have uh, audience that would uh, who would like to ask questions. So maybe like later after our uh, afterwards. So uh, my my background is not on public health. So honestly, I'm not really uh, uh, I'm not really knowledgeable. And it's very good that you uh, shared your uh, knowledge about the uh, public health or the awareness of HIV. My background is pathology. I am uh, uh, more of uh, the pathogenesis uh, genesis or the pathophysiology, which means that uh, to uh, try to uh, explain how does HIV goes in and how does uh, HIV uh, produce the symptoms. And I would really agree to your uh, uh, ABCD because it, uh, those, uh, those uh, advices would uh, actually um, uh, target all of the modes of transmission. I guess it's targeted to the uh, modes of transmission. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> so much, Doc. All right. Uh, 
that was Dr. Al Muhaymen Masuro Usman. Um, as a way of, our way of expressing our gratitude, allow us, allow us to virtually award you your, cer your certificate, Kim. Okay. I think they someone has a question, pa. Huh? Yeah. Some, someone, uh, I know. I I I think uh, I heard okay, someone. Sir Greg. Na, Hello, Doc. Good morning. Ah, yes. Good morning. Good morning, question, po. Doc. Yes, Paul. Yes, uh, Paul. Uh, uh, I know this question, uh, the answer already, but I, I'm curious. Uh, can is there is there a possibility we can acquire HIV through kissing by infected person? What I'm trying to, uh, to say, Doc, is uh, more than kissing. No, medyo la ini sa paminahon like uh kanang by sucking the tongue of example nan adok ba so can we acquire is i by kissing by sucking the tongue of the person or what I, what i'm trying to say is more than just more than a kiss ordinary kiss that's all okay though. okay so so i i get that po sir uh actually um the 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 our references would say that you cannot get the you know the 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 HIV or the virus in the through kissing, through kissing, and it's a general general term for that. It means to that it would also include the French kiss, and the reason for that is uh, because of the. I think you were referring to French kiss, de ba yung may kasamang dila. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, oh, uh, so uh, so so I guess uh, uh, that would be explained by the ano uh, by the uh, by the. Uh, concentration of the virus the concentration of the virus in the saliva so i think the uh, the the concentration if there is a concentration of a virus in the saliva is not is not very very high to produce infection Ayan. unless siguro that you will be uh, uh, producing so much saliva na sobrang dami one liter ng saliva <laughs> baka pwede ka nang mag-infect pero in a normal kissing siguro kasi hindi naman uh, sobrang tagal yung pagkikis siguro the exchange of body fluids is not that uh, great the amount of the viral load is not that great to cause the infection so remember that uh, viruses so, yes po uh, Yes, go ahead, po. So, so ang advice doc is simple kiss, kiss lang sa dilitong prince kiss kay medyo delikado. <laughs> Thank you, doc. Thank you kayo. Thank okay, you. sige, so, welcome, sir. welcome po. Grabe, sir Gregor. <laughs> Pinaningot ako ng marami si <laughs> Ma'am Kim, any other question? Hello. Intensive, kayo ah, sila, doc, because Kisita na, morag na apa, Sir Jasper. Ah, morning. Yes, good morning, Sir. Ah, what percentage is an individual could be transmitted with HIV if he has or she has tuberculosis? Because during during when I was in the hospital, we have this ah, it's SARS like ah, Philippine. I cannot really regarding with the complete uh, word of that PIDSAR, which says uh, something like research of the infectious diseases. And then Dr. Dave, uh, Dr. Dave of Region 10 uh, Department of Education told us that the chances, it's more likely the chances of a certain individual to have AIDS are those who have tuberculosis presently. Okay. Yan so that's a very good question. Okay, when it comes to figures uh, like uh, the, the exact percentage, I cannot. Uh, I need to read on that <laughs> with uh, the exact uh, percentage. But what I can tell you is that uh, the appearance or the uh, 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 the uh, tuberculosis or the different diseases that would come with uh, uh, HIV or AIDS would depend on the level of the CD4, CD4. Uh -huh. So yung CD4 na t lymphocyte. So if it's uh, uh, less than 200, that, that is AIDS. So you can have mm -hmm. tuberculosis na. And if the, uh, the uh, level of the CD4 is low, 
like for example, less than 200, that would mean that there is also very, very high viral load. Mataas ta rin yung viral load. And remember that the ability for the virus to infect to infect depends on the viral load. So ayun po. So definitely, if a person with HIV has tuberculosis, and that would mean that the CD4 is lowered, and that would mean that there is a high viral load, then he has more, uh, the, 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 uh, the body fluids coming from that patient has a more chances to infect other people. What about doc, those who are having diabetes mellitus? Ah, diabetes mellitus. Okay, so diabetes mellitus is not part in the classification of the uh, clinical uh, clinical uh, 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 the clinical phases of TB. So uh, you cannot say that if you have diabetes, you can have a higher viral load like that. So uh, the only uh, the only uh, diseases that can pinpoint which uh, which among the clinic, clinical phase uh, is the patient in are uh, tuberculosis, number one, candida, number two, mm -hmm. you can have uh, uh, other uh, fungal infections, and then the uh, cancer, yung malignancies kanina. But diabetes, mellitus, there are no studies that would tell you na pag may diabetes and may HIV, mas marami siyang matatransmit na virus, no. Uh -huh. So you don't have to discriminate the... Ano, the, the diabetic. Okay, Doc. Yun lang po. Salamat po. Okay. Maraming salamat din po. Pray for, pray for the diabetes. <laughs> Now, pa follow-up question, Doc. Pwede pa, Doc? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. Uan, how about MSM then having mouth sores or having mouth problems then naking oral sex? Tapos ba ang chance na makukuha niya ang virus? Yes, definitely yes. Uh, yung, uh, when you say there are uh, oral lesions, oral lesions, uh, of course, uh, in Bisaya, luas, di ba? Luas. Okay, so luas is an ulcer. Ulcer. So uh, what do you mean by an ulcer? It means that there is uh, uh, the, the epithelium, which is the covering, the covering of the mouth, is scraped off. Na scrape off siya. So, There's a portion of your mouth that there is no epithelium, there is no covering. And remember that the covering is your protection. Kasi after dun sa covering, just below your, your covering is a stroma or a connective tissue. So in the connective tissue, there are many blood vessels. Maraming blood vessels dun. So if you, uh, if you, are, if you have an aptus ulcer na kay luas and then you... Uh, you do an oral sex. Of course, uh, the, there is no epithelium for you to be protected and then the, the semen or the, the, the seminal fluid will go directly into your bloodstream via the ulcer you have in your mouth. So that's a very, very risk. So be sure that when you do oral uh, sex, you, should, uh, you shouldn't have any uh, ulcers in your mouth. What about those people having... Uh Uh, open, uh, say, open wound, if this uh, individual will be, say, uh, napataka ng saliva yung wound ng isang tao ng may age, is there a chances magpaka-age din yung may napatakan? I mean? When it comes to saliva, very slim. Kasi yung saliva uh, is not part of the uh, body fluids that uh, has a very uh, high concentration. But if it's uh, the semen, That's another thing. That's another. Mm -hmm. uh, or if it's a blood, na nagpatak don sa sa wound, then there is a great possibility. So actually, the mode of transmission of HIV depends on the percentage. Like uh, when you say uh, uh, for uh, health workers like me or kay Mam Kat at kay Mam Kim, uh, the needle stick injury. Yung konware if you if uh, if a person is uh, uh, injected with a with a syringe and the syringe is injected to you so there's a chance for you to have that it HIV so the the I, if i'm not mistaken the mistaken the chance would be about 0.3% mamkat and mamkin can uh, correct me so 
just around that percentage. So it depends on the uh, viral load in the body fluid. And yes, to your question, it can transmit, especially if it's blood to blood. Pero saliva to blood, then uh, probably hindi masyado. Thank you, so, I think on the next question is already discussed. Can you get HIV from oral sex? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we already discussed about that and also it was included in the presentation. And uh, the risk for you to have HIV will also increase if you have ulcers in your mouth. Uh, there is a question. Aha, pwede makatest. I think ako yung tubagan. <laughs> na sa mga kuan, ang referral na testing center diri, ako na balan is RE2 to both. Yes, there are kuan available, available HIV testing sa RE2 to both. Pero ang referral facility sa Region 10 is po on the Mars Gen, Northern Mindanao Medical Center, and Amay Pakpak Medical Center. Okay, so I hope all your questions, confusions in mind, nalamdagan ta, pinaagi sa atong medical expert na si Dr. Osman. And Doc Altoy or Doc Osman, as our way of expressing our gratitude to you for for uh, giving us this um, precious time of yours, kay grabe na makakabisi na tao, um, Ma'am Kim, please do the honor to award his certificate, please. Certificate of Recognition is hereby awarded to Dr. Al Muhaymin Masorong Osman. Vice Chairman of Department of Pathology and Laboratories, Hospital ng Makati, Makati City, Philippines, in grateful recognition and commendation for his invaluable efforts and exemplary performance as resource speaker during the webinar entitled Adolescent Reproductive Health Education, HIV and AIDS, conducted on September 28, 2021. Given this 28th day of September 2021 at the Division of Office of the Department of Education, Lano del Norte, Picarangan to Budlano del Norte. Signed by Edelberto L. Eplinaria, CESO 5, Schools Division, Superintendent of Division of Lano del Norte. Thank you, Kayo Doc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> um, yeah, of course, uh, we should always uh, continue our HIV awareness. And uh, of course, even though that I am uh, uh, connected in the hospital, we always have. Uh, we always uh, experience uh, that there is an increase in the HIV infection. Of course, ngayon kasi medyo uh, na-overshadow siya ng COVID. But there is still a pandemic when it comes to HIV and AIDS. And the only way to defeat the uh, pandemic of the HIV is through education. So we need to uh, uh, build our capacity and try to learn so much so that uh, we can uh, prevent Mm -hmm. uh, or protect ourselves and our family from getting AIDS. So, thank you very much. Correct, Judka Doc. Correct, Judka Doc. Education is very much important. Mo na siya ang primary role as nurses, as medical professionals in the Department of Education. Doc Usman, can we invite you to do like this? This is a gesture for OK sa DepEd or a plan kalusugan sa DepEd. My fellow nurses and colleagues in the Department of Education, can we have another set of photo ops, please? Okay, so that ed. Thank you so much, Dr. Usman and our colleagues. And finally, 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 to formally close our webinar on Adolescent Reproductive Health, HIV and AIDS, please help me welcome our dear dentist in the school health section. Our WEEN's focal person, Dr. Celia Cabatania Suberi.
Sige, sige. <clears throat> Hello, good morning. First and foremost, natahasan ko aning closing remarks, no? <laughs> <laughs> Tawar ba ka, Ching? <laughs> okay. So our division superintendent, schools division superintendent, uh, Edelberto Opinaria, to our ASDS, Ma'am Rosemary Tima Cesar, and to our chief, SGOD, Ma'am Marika, Marikar Ablin, Mayong bumtag sa inyo. Okay. First and foremost, I would like to express my heartfelt appreciations to the speakers and facilitators for their valuable knowledge of this ERH ori program orientation. And my deepest gratitude goes to all who attended this orientation and help us to make it successful and we hope that this orientation we learn something that is useful in our daily life and to the school learners in behalf of this deep ed division of lano del norte headed by our very active schools division superintendent edelberto Oplinaria saying thank you so much for your time and cooperation to make it successful. <clears throat> Have a big smile and invest love, not hate, because we, we only live once. Thank you and God bless us all. Ahu, ahu. Ahu, <laughs> grow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Celia. Ganahan kay ko ato. Unsa to give love because we only live once. But when we express our love, we need to uh, preserve our health. All right? Yeah. So again, at this point also, again, I remind them mo, never forget to have your names registered sa atong attendance link. And also, please uh, have your, your answers casted sa atong katami links which I believe nga nakakaskade na sa atong mga school GCs by your respective nurses. This virtual activity will never be successful without the remarkable support coming from our SDS, Dr. Edelberto L. of Linaria, Cecil 5, our ASDS, Dr. Rosemary T. Matesser, our Chief Education Supervisor in the SGOD, Dr. Maria C. Ablin, our officer in charge of the school health and nutrition section, Dr. Melvin C. Inerio. Our ARH education program focal person, Nurse Kim Rose Evol. My fellow program coordinators, my fellow nurses, our school administrators, our ARH school coordinators. Of course, our speaker coming from the hospital ng Makati who used to be a medical doctor also serving Kauswagan Provincial Hospital way back years ago. Our SSG officers and the rest of our stakeholders. Once again, this has been Nurse Catherine Gay Agpasa Putis or Nurse Chay. I would like to leave you this quote from Buddha. To keep the body in good health is a duty. Otherwise, we shall not be able to keep our minds strong and clear. My fellow Kadep at Lanao del Norte, maayong udto, maayong buntag, and I wish us all a healthier and a better version of ourselves as the days go by. Stay safe, everyone. Until then, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ching. Thank, thank, thank you, Kaayo. Thank you all. Thank you.